myself Santosh. I do have around nine years of experience working in IT industry. And currently I'm working as manager in Microsoft. My core experience is towards data science, data engineering and data analytics project. Currently I'm managing around eight projects and total I have worked with around 80 projects from different domains such as banking, healthcare, insurance, e-commerce and retail. And I'm a certified trainer taking training for KSR for the last five years. Welcome to KSR Data Vision YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to look at very important topic that is slowly changing dimension. Now, there is a lot of materials where it gives you a different understanding. So let me put it in a very layman term. So first we will talk about what are the type of tables we have and specially we'll focus on slowly changing dimension. And after that, we'll see what are the types that is available among this slowly changing dimension. Now, first we need to understand what is this fact table and what is this dimension table? Now, if you look at the top portion, so we have a table which consists of customer name, the order date, sales and country. Now, if you focus on this table, the table which consists of actual business measures or calculations or numbers, we can call it as a fact table. Now here, the main column is sales now sales it could be profit it could be discounts it could be revenue the table which consists of actual business information is called fact table okay then coming down what is dimension table now if you look at the dimension table we have two dimension table one is which is storing the customer information and the other one is which is storing country information now dimension table is actually like a lookup table what is lookup table what do you mean by one what do you mean by two who is one who is one who is two so that is what you are getting it here now if you focus properly in the table one we have a customer that is customer santosh or kiran or rahul now usually what happens in the real time Whenever you are actually having this type of data, we don't usually store it as a customer name. You will be storing as one, two, three. Similarly, even the country, you will be storing as one, 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 two, one, three. Now, this is how we maintain data security in the fact table. Now, what exactly is this one? What exactly is this one one? That is where you will be looking the values up in the dimension table. So dimension table can be called as a lookup table where you will get to know the detailed description of the index. Okay, now all good. Now, this is where you need to focus on. We have two tables. One is customer table and one is country table. If you focus on this, we are assuming that both are dimension tables. But if you carefully observe, one is dimension table and the other we will not consider as a dimension table. You may be wondering why? Your names are there. Here the country names are there. I don't see any difference. Both are same. If that is what you're understanding, I'll give you a use case. Imagine the first table, which is an orange table. It is a customer table. Do you have any limit in this table? No. Today, it could be three customers. Tomorrow, it could be 30 customers. Day after tomorrow, it could be 30,000. Then 3 lakh, 3 million, 3 billion. And it can keep on increasing because customer growth is depending on the business. More I make business, more I make strategies. Definitely, I can increase my customer count. But if you talk about the other table, now this is where you need to remember. Today, it's three countries. Tomorrow, it could be 30 countries where you're making sale. And maximum in the world map or in the globe, you can see only 230 countries. After that, do you think you can have 240 countries? Do you think you can have 260 countries? Do you think you can have 1000 countries? Not possible. 
Now this is a table. Yes, it's a lookup table which consists of actually lookup information of the country but after certain extent it is not going to increase. Maximum you can make sales in 230 countries. After that, do you think any new country will be invented in the uh, maybe in the next few days? No, right? So this type of table we will call is as slowly changing dimension. Now slowly changing dimension is a table which does not change frequently. Whereas in customer, a new customer comes, the more and more entry will happen. But in the country, maximum 230 countries only. After that, you cannot have new, new countries that is coming into the picture. So the definition of slowly changing dimension, yes, it is a table. It is also a lookup table, which does not change frequently. Now we will go back and we'll see, of course, if you want, you can consider as a Google definition or a chat GPT definition. What slowly changing dimension says that it actually does not change very often. This is a very, very important thing you need to remember. And apart from that, it is also a table which stores your current data and historical data. Now we'll see what exactly is this. And as part of this slowly changing dimension, this is a very, very important terminology you need to know whether you are a data analyst or a data engineering or a data science. This concept is very important. It is asked in almost all the interviews. Now, we will try to explain what is this first point. Slowly changing dimension is a table which stores current data and historical data. Now, I have told you that maximum it can have 230 countries. Right? After that, we may not have anything. But if you look at the types, there is slowly changing dimension type 0. Now, what exactly is a type 0? If you see the original table, in the original table, you have country ID and country name. So you may not have a new country, but you may have some names change or maybe some description change. So something can happen. Update is possible. So insert, I would say that it may not happen as frequently as we do it but updates can happen but in the type 0 what exactly has happened is USA has been replaced to United States now that is all it is okay a old value is being replaced with new value now that is all about type 0 we don't know more information on this value now if you focus more on type 1 now, if you type one, if you observe, there is an original table and we can also see that there is a value change that has happened from USA to United States. But if you observe carefully, now another flag has been added, which is called active flag, which tells you what was previously there and what currently it is there. Previously, it was USA and now it has become United States. Now, how do you identify which one is the mostly used or which one you have to use it? It's simple as simple as just put a filter where active flag equal to one so that when in your result, this entry may not come. This entry may not come. But in the previous example type zero, we didn't even know what was the old value. But here we are getting to know the old value and we are also getting to know about the current value. So basically it was USA and now it has become United States. Now to define type one, type one tells you that which is the active value as of today. Now this is type one. So let's move on to type two. Now you can only define what is this type two. Type zero we discussed, type one we discussed. Now coming to type two, you can see that more clarity is being added to this dimension table such as who has changed when it was changed and what value it has changed everything you can get it for example if you observe the second row initially it was to usa it was used it was updated by a domain user and it was updated on january 15th last year or maybe 2021 and the latest record has been replaced to united states and now it was being changed by an admin and it was also changed on one year later it is in 2022 now 
the understanding of the type 2 is it gives you all the information who has changed when it was changed what it was changed complete information you'll get it this is type 2 right so we have few more uh, i mean if you can see in a lot of articles we have type 3 type 4 type 5 and all but these are the three basic types that we usually use in all of our etl process okay so this is a very very important topic so please try to understand try to understand a very layman term you take an example of a customer and you take an example of a country that answers your question thank you for watching we'll come back with more videos please reach out to our team for more questions thanks for subscribing